This week's episode of the Hook Podcast is brought to you by Hill Rose Company Clothing. Get your exclusive Hook Podcast t-shirts there and check out our 2021 merch line. Check us out at hillroseco.com. Episode number nine of the Hook Podcast, and uh, it's nice to be back. We had Johnny McGuire on last week, and we have a couple of really cool episodes coming up, including this one. Uh, You've probably seen this guy on TikTok or on the news with his wife or many other places because awesome is everywhere uh, let's welcome Austin Burke to the podcast today awesome to have you on dude we're huge huge fans of yours Brayley and I've been listening to you for a while actually and um I it's funny because um for when I first was introduced to your music I started you know I would play it and then I play a lot of stuff for my wife because she's a huge country music fan and yeah. And I would play, I would play something of yours just to see if I could, you know, just to see what she would say. And every time she'd be like, who is that? I love his voice. What is his name? Who is that? And now she's a huge fan too. So awesome to have you on, man. Welcome. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I, I appreciate that. And uh, it's always cool to hear stuff like that because I, I feel like I sort of am a, a new artist. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always whenever you hear that somebody likes your music, it's just like the big, the biggest honor. So seriously, thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys having me on, man. I'm excited to do it. And, um, uh, been, been looking forward to this for sure. Absolutely. Dude. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah. I know it's been crazy for you. So yeah, man, it's, it's been wild where you, you guys are in Denver, right? Yeah. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. My, uh, my wife's family, uh, she actually went to rock Canyon high school. Okay. Um, and then she has a lot of family that lives in uh, castle rock area. So we're, we're out there quite a bit. I think KJ was there when you were there on radio tour. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I recognize your face, man. That was, it's crazy. It's always in and out of those places. You know what I mean? Yeah, right? for sure. Like, it's just wild. There's <laughs> a lot of people like, Hey, you know, come this way, do this, do that. You know, you so. know, I actually remember that day too, cause it was my birthday. And, uh, I remember telling my rep, uh, I was like, Hey, you know, um, is there any way we can like kind of have a chill day, you know, just cause it's my birthday. And we, we actually went to like five different radio stations that day. And I'm like, yeah. this is, it was, it was by far the busiest day we had. Of course. Like, yeah. Always. You open That's Pandora's a, box. <laughs> somebody else was telling us that too. Oh, it was, uh, Johnny McGuire is a really good friend of mine. And yeah. when he was in town, he texted me, he's like, Hey man, let's have lunch. And then he texted me, he's like, I'm in your building. He's like, I just brought a pizza if you want to come down here. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, it was crazy. He was like, dude, this is the third place I've been today. And then they immediately jumped on a flight to Salt Lake or somewhere like that. So yeah, it's I don't miss I don't miss radio tour at all. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I don't think yeah. anybody does. No, I, I really don't. Everybody who comes through, I feel like nobody misses radio tour at all. Well, and it's such an interesting, it's such an interesting dynamic too, because you know, I feel bad for everybody in the radio station too. Cause it's like, y'all have to meet these people who half of them, you don't even know who they are. And it's like, you gotta, you know, act like you're going to play their song and you probably won't. And it's yeah. like, it's this game, man. It's this game. But I mean, I will say like, I, I really enjoy just meeting people. And like, I mean, I think all of us would give any opportunity to go back to just like being able to walk in a building without a mask and like <laughs> meet a bunch of random yeah, people. Like, for sure. What is this world? Like? In that know. little tiny room that we have too, which will never be the same again. I don't know how it's going to happen uh, in the future. You know what I mean? Cause it's, yeah. I don't know. I, I can't imagine trying to have a, a song at radio right now as a new artist. It's like, how do you even go and meet the radio stations? It's impossible. Yeah, we, we couldn't have it. I remember that. No, you guys had a great setup there. Uh, it was cool. Cause it sounded really good too. Like as you know, yeah. a lot of times you'll play and, and they're like, Hey, what do you think of this? And it's like, ah, oh, damn, like I, this doesn't even sound good in my ears. Like I can't imagine it sounds good to anybody else, but right. I, it was, it was like being in a recording studio kind of at your place. It was dope. That's- I'm the one who sits in the back and mixes it. <laughs> I just mix it live. It's Make like the sure old front of yeah, it's the old front of house guy yeah. me at that point yeah. for sure. I just sit back there with my ears in and avoid everybody and mix it live. That's so. crazy. How you guys been, man? How's it? How, how you been this last year with everything going on? No problems. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's been actually kind of nice. Like we got to launch this podcast and yeah, yeah, um, yeah we've been lucky, man. We we tapped into radio stuff. Uh, I got out of radio a couple of years ago. Braley and I have known each other. He was actually my intern probably about ten years ago, wow. and so we've just always stayed connected. And Braley was on uh, on the air just recently because of COVID. They kind of they had to cut people and 
So it worked out for us because we were able to start this podcast. And I know a lot of people have been tapping into this world, but we kind of came with a different concept that I think most people have of, we want to really bring the songwriters and pull back the curtain on what's going on in Nashville. Cause a lot of people know the artists and the songs, but they don't know how much work goes into creating that song and the people. And a lot of the time, the hands that are on it. So we wanted to bring light to that. And that's how this came about. So We've been really lucky. We've had some really cool people on. So we're able to have people that, you know, aren't getting that radio push and friends of mine in town and, you know, connections that we've made. And so, yeah, it's been really nice to be able to do this. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I saw you guys had uh, my buddy Chris LaCourt on. Yeah, uh, good dude. Yeah, yeah, man, he's awesome. I just actually just wrote with him for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he's got a spot. I need to listen to the podcast. I'm sure he talked all about it, but he's got a little spot with Sam Hunt yeah. uh, in Green Hills. And uh, I was there and uh, my publishing, I just signed a deal with uh, Thomas Rhett and Rhett Akins. And uh, so we were writing with Rhett and Rhett had just been like around some people that had COVID or whatever. So he zoomed in. Chris and I were in the same room, but Rhett was zooming in. It was kind of crazy. I've never written like that before where two of us are together and one's not. Um, but afterwards, he's so cool, man. I was like, this guy, first of all, like just the most humble, like amazing person ever. And then yes. afterwards, we started talking about cigars or whatever. And he's like, oh, dude, I got like, I got all these Cubans. Like, you want one? I was like, for real? <laughs> like, <laughs> so he gave That's me awesome. a Cuban. But uh, yeah, man, he's he's great. He's such yeah. a cool Chris is the best. We had so much fun. We recorded that one on like a Saturday morning. It was like 8 a.m. I was like still eating my fruit from Chick-fil-A. Like we were just having a good old time. We could have yeah. talked to Chris for Chris and I met years ago, but you know, we could have talked to Chris for three hours. And we've also had like friends on too. Like uh Jake Rose is a really good friend of mine. Him and I go way back today. I just texted him and told him congrats because he had a cut on the new FGL. So yeah, that's dude. his like big He's first. Dude. I, wrote with, I wrote with him a couple of years ago um just another great guy um, yeah he connected with some of my buddies out of vegas at stoney's um oh yeah we've been there but he, he's good buddies with like toad and chris and all them out out in vegas so yeah man jake's great he's a great dude yeah, i need jake to ride with him again soon for sure yeah jake and i have known each other for i mean yeah. heck it's been 12 years that jake and i have known each other so that's, that's crazy awesome. that's awesome yeah my fiance uh is a big fan of yours. And that's how I found out about you before we had met when you were on radio tour. And the other day you had DM me back and she was like, Oh, your phone just went off. I was like, Oh yeah, it's just Austin Burke. And she's like, what a life you live. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey, I don't, I don't know if I'm that status, but I appreciate it, man. I tell your, tell your fiance, but by the way, congratulations. When'd you get, uh, when'd you get engaged? Uh, November 14th on my grandparents, 55th wedding anniversary. That's sick. That yeah. is so awesome. Yeah. Congrats. So, and tell yes. your wife thank you as well. I, that, that's that's cool, man. I appreciate that. Lo love to um, – it's funny, man. So, like, Spotify kind of gives you this, like, this, like, pie chart of your demographics and stuff like that. And when I when I came out with Whole Lot in Love and I was – that's when I, you know, met you guys trying to bring that song to radio and stuff. It was, like, 70% girls, 30% guys. And uh, I just looked the other day, and it's, like, 55% girls – 45 percent guys nice. so that, that it's like narrowed so i'm thinking you know maybe like girls are telling their you know significant other like hey it's not all love songs and like <laughs> no it's definitely not it's For good sure. man all of uh, your stuff is really good appreciate that man appreciate that I, i'm really excited to dive into this but let's go all the way back man phoenix arizona i saw in your bio you sang the anthem for the diamondbacks and the suns at three is that true yeah, yeah, man. Um, I, it's a weird story. So I started singing. Uh, my dad took me to a rodeo. Uh, he used to love going to the rodeos and I would dress up. I'd have a big cowboy hat, the Wranglers, the chaps, the boots, all of it, you know. And uh, so we'd go to the rodeo and it was kind of a thing. And my dad filmed. He was he loved. He's always been like a camera guy. He always had a camcorder with him, you know, back, back in the day, the big old like VHS <laughs> thing. Uh, and he was filming the horses. He thought I'd like the rodeo. And I actually ended up loving the national anthem before the rodeo and so the guy started singing or whatever my dad and i was like play the song again play the song again you know i was like i was like two and uh i said and so my dad just would like rewind the vhs and i'd hear it and i learned all the words uh when i was two years old 
to the, to the national anthem. And my dad's like, well, that's kind of weird. Like not, you know, every two year old singing the national anthem. So um, he started videoing me singing the nat- national anthem and, uh, and then he sent it out to the Phoenix Suns, the Diamondbacks. Rosie O'Donnell was one of the people that caught on as well. And uh, just kind of snowballed from there, man. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I've been singing since I was two, but it's been a very different path to getting to where I am for sure <laughs> from that. That's awesome. That's so crazy. You know, like the kids, like they have these things and you, as a, as a parent, you know, I have four kids. So, you know, it's, it's crazy. Cause you see certain things you're like, Whoa, that's crazy. They can do that. Like maybe I should let them tap into that. And that's really cool that he lets you do that and kind of roll into that. But, um, we also kind of read up that you, you had a dream of playing baseball. I'm a huge baseball guy. I grew up playing baseball. So um, I'm a Rockies yeah. fan. You're probably a Diamondbacks fan. So we probably could go at it a little bit. Oh, dude. Tell us about that, dude. Yeah, man. I, I grew up. Uh, so when I was on the Rosie O'Donnell show, actually, I was when I was three, she asked me what I wanted to be when I get older. And I said, I wanted to be a singing baseball player. That's, that cool. was, uh, that's what I was. And uh, I wanted to be that because of Garth Brooks. So Garth totally back in the day when he was doing spring training, he went to, uh, he went to, uh, I think it was, it must've been like Tempe, Arizona or somewhere around there. Uh, Peoria is where okay. it was Peoria, Arizona. And he was playing for the Padres. And uh, that's, I sang the anthem before a Padres game that Garth was actually playing baseball at. And oh, so I got so to cool. meet him at a young age. And like, seriously, from the time that I did that at like three he was my idol, you know, like every song I listened to was a Garth song and I just wanted to be, I wanted to be just like him. And so I was like, well, man, you know, my hero is a singing baseball player and that's what I want to do. And uh, so that's kind of where my story takes a turn. Um, When I was about nine years old, um, I was doing all kinds of stuff, man. Like Disney wanted me to come out and be like a Disney kid in LA. And I was just singing a lot. And it was, it was like every weekend I had something, you know, and at a young age, it's, you just want to be a kid kind of. And uh, so I told my dad, um, you know, I just, I wanted to stop singing. I I was over it. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. And um, I started just playing baseball. That's all I did. And uh, so from basically like nine to 18, all I did was play baseball. um, And I just, I kind of quit singing in that time. Um, And I guess it was, my family moved to San Diego when I was a freshman in high school and it was pretty, pretty traumatic for me uh it would it sounds like a good thing you know moving to the beach and everything but um I went to a school it was pretty rough and uh got bullied pretty bad uh you know lots of gang violence lots of I was a minority at my school believe it or not and uh just had to kind of like fight like learn how to fight and like all kinds of crazy stuff that I was not used to in Arizona and uh so that's kind of when I started to that's when I started to write songs and uh my dad said my freshman year, I basically just like sat in my room and, and wrote, um, wasn't like singing, you know, out for anybody or wasn't like performing, but that's when I like learned how to take my emotions that I felt and put them into actual lyrics, um, during that time. So that's kind of when my, the turn turned again, you know, I was like, man, I kind of like this music thing and I definitely can see myself doing it. Um, and that's, that's probably when I was like 16 is when that happened. When you were writing songs at that Sorry, point, really. you know, you're holed up in your bedroom and you're writing songs. How long was it until you went, okay, I was a singer and I could sing other people's songs, but now I realize that these actually are pretty good. And how long did it take until you showed some people some of the stuff that you were writing? Man, it's funny. I still got, I'm going to look at them one day, but I still got all those songs I wrote in my guitar case um, <clears throat> from back in the day. But um. I started to sing in front of my family at first and I, you know, I learned how to play basic chords, just the, the easy chords, you know, I call them. And uh, so learn how to play guitar and sing a little bit. I never took lessons, but just kind of taught myself from YouTube. And uh, I guess it wasn't until probably like my sophomore year that um, I started singing for, for my church and tried to get um, into the singing, like in front of people thing again. Um, but that's when I did it for myself and I started to love it more, you know, like my dad, he was amazing and he took me to everything, but, um, it was really, it was, it felt like a job when I was young and when I was able to do it for myself is when it really became fun, you know, and that's, 
I think, I think that's with anything in life. It's like you guys with this podcast, like you guys are in, you know, in radio, but it's like, it's not ever stuff that you get to choose or it's not for yourself. Now you get to choose who you have on your podcast. You get to choose, you know, which direction you want to take this conversation. And I think that's, that's when things became, become fun, you know, is when you get to choose on your own. So that couldn't be any more true what you're saying. I, I think about, you know, Brayley and I talk about that a lot and how we, if it's not fun, we don't want to do it because we've already had to do stuff that, we thought was going to be fun. Like you said, you know, you get into it as a kid, you get into this, you know, this life that you think, and then it becomes a job and you're like, wait, this is not what I signed up for. So that's really cool, man, that you were able to really discover, rediscover that love and that passion because music is amazing. I mean, it's the one, one thing that can touch people in so many different ways and it, you know, in ways that you never even realize. Um, So really cool, man. But um, taking the next step, you moved to Nashville at, at 19. Is that right? So yeah. tell us about that move and what made you go to Nashville? So I, I, uh, played baseball for one year at a junior college in Santa Barbara. And, uh, I, I was a left-handed pitcher. And when I was in high school, I was, you know, I, I played center field. I played first base. Uh, I played, you know, and I hit, I was a good hitter, but when I got to college, they were like, you're just gonna, you're just gonna pitch. Cause you're a left-handed pitcher. You're not going to hit like, just pitch. Um, and so it kind of got boring for me, you know, baseball got boring and, um, my music, I I actually got connected with uh, a rapper when I was in Santa Barbara. And so he, I was like, I was singing, I was doing like, you know, I guess like Coldplay type stuff and he would rap over it. Like it would, and it was kind of cool. It was the first time where I was like, all right, this is, this is something that like brings me a lot of happiness, a lot of joy. So, um, you know, just in that little dorm room in Santa Barbara, we made some songs and, uh, I'll, you know, I'll never forget. I, Lexi was, she moved to LA and I, I had met her in Santa Barbara and I called her up and I said, um, uh, well, she had actually, she had just broken up with me. So we broke up a few times before we got married, but I, I was like, I, I don't know what it is. I have this overwhelming feeling to just move to Nashville. I'd never been to the South. I'd never been, um, you know, anywhere near the South. And I just, man, I don't know what it was. It was this overwhelming feeling that like I had to move there. And so literally packed up my bags. I had 650 bucks and that was just enough for first month's rent um, and moved to Nashville. Had you ever been to Nashville before that? No. You're the never. second person we've had that had never been Hunter Phelps, who, yeah. you know, has multiple songs on the radio right now was telling us that he had never been to town before he moved in. He had just pulled yeah. into music row. That's where the first thing he ever saw. Dude, it, my story is very similar to that, and I had never been to Nashville, but not only had I not been to Nashville, I really knew nothing about Nashville, and so, you know, I got, I always get messages from people that are like, hey, man, like, can we get coffee? Like, I'm thinking about moving to Nashville, like, would love to link up or whatever, and, you know, I tell people all the time, like, just, if you feel it, just move, move here, you know? I know it's scary. I know it's overwhelming, but, like, I think we're all led in life to do things, um, and some people call it like, you know, intuition. Some people call it, you know, God, some people like whatever it is, it, there's some kind of force that's moving us in a certain direction. And I think um, you either choose to follow that and go with the flow or you can go against it. And, um, you know, it's, I'm sure you guys are, like I said, with this podcast, it's the same thing. Like you, you just felt like you should do it and you're going for it. Uh, that's how it was for me with Nashville. That's awesome. That's such great advice. Um, I hope that, you know, young singers or songwriters that are potentially thinking about doing that realize that the first step is always the hardest. And so really cool that you took that. What was it like when you first got to Nashville? You know, I know they call it a 10 year town and um, you know, so you you had a lot of work ahead of you. What was that like when you first got there? What did you do? Man. So I got very lucky. I, uh, I got linked up with uh, this guy named Will Rambo and he, uh, he called me one day, but it was a, it was a Craigslist ad. And uh, I was looking for a house, looking for a place to live, like some roommates or something. And I get a call from this guy and he's like, Hey man, my name's Will. Um, I just got my house rented out cause he was going to rent out a bedroom. He's like, but, uh, are you a singer? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, man, I can just tell by, I can just hear it from the phone. I don't know what it is about you, but, uh, I think, I think I'm going to have a place for you to live. He goes, let me make a couple calls and get back to you. He calls me back like 30 minutes. He's like, all right, dude, I got a place for you to live. 
I got a job for you. And uh, I got some people that might want to write with you. So just, you know, Whoa. move out here and we'll make it happen. I'm like, dude, this is like it, every sign led to Nashville. Like, and it was once I said I wanted to move here, it's like the floodgates open. So Amazing. I moved here and um, what I didn't know, he had written the song Wild One by Faith Hill. So he was, he had a number one. Yeah, he's a big time writer. And uh, he got me in with his mother-in-law. I lived with a 65 year old Australian couple uh, for my first two years in Nashville. Uh, and she actually got me a job at the Palm restaurant. She was the maitre d' there. And so I worked at the Palm for four years. Um, and it's, it's crazy because that, you know, that job at the Palm is where literally everything in my life, um, stemmed and blossomed from there. Uh, so many opportunities happened because of that place. And I met, it, it's sort of, if you haven't been in Nashville, the Palm is right in downtown. Um, for those of you listening, uh, it's right downtown and it is just, the Palm is like the Mecca of where everybody who's anybody goes there. Um, and I didn't know that, you know, it's just a job I worked at. I was the food runner, but, um, I met, you know, John Mark's, uh, playlist, uh, playlist for a country Spotify. I met, uh, Stormy Warren there. I met, uh, Vince Gill there. I met, uh, you know, pretty much everybody that's made an impact in my life. I met there and, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy to think back and actually, you know, tell you guys this story, but a lot of things went right, uh, for in my life that I just, you know, I have to have to give credit to God be, because of all the things that went right. I'm not saying it was easy, but a lot of things went right. <laughs> um, and I trusted that flow, you know? Yeah. In those four years of working at the Palm, I mean, fine dining, like you said, the Mecca of everything, is there any relationships that you still have from there that still have helped you through your career after those four years? Yeah. Well, you know, John Marks has been just a, a huge supporter of me and he really, he really put my name on the map. Um, you know, I'll never forget. Uh, I was working one night and he had just, I, I showed him my music and he goes, Hey man, I'm going to put my, put your song on my playlist. And I'm like, cool. Like I, I, honestly, he, I, true story i did not know what he did i knew he worked for spotify the time i met him he actually worked for sirius x in the highway but i knew he would and spotify back then was was very new it wasn't like it is today it was like it was a new thing you know it was invitation new. only at one point too you had to invite your friends to be on spotify it wasn't something you could just yeah. do yeah and spotify was not like it is today where everybody has it it was just it was a it was a new platform right so he's like i'm gonna put your song on my playlist and i was like cool man like you're going to listen to it while you run or whatever. <laughs> um, but at little did I know that that was, it was life-changing. Um, and, you know, he, uh, I'll never forget the day I was, I brought some food to a table and this guy goes, Hey man, are you, are you Austin Burke? Do you sing whole lot in love? And I, I promise you guys, I literally told my boss, I'm like, Hey man, I'm putting my two weeks. I'm done. Like that. that was it. I, was like, I, can't, I can't be working at a restaurant and people are going to recognize me. Um, <laughs> And I quit, man. I quit after that, literally after that guy said that. <laughs> let's go to that song, man. Let's talk about Whole Lot in Love. Um, yeah. Let's talk about writing the song. Yeah, so um, I might even have it here. I might be able to pull it up. Um, that song for me was was so life-changing, and I think it should be inspiring to a lot of um, new artists, especially independent artists. You know, I'm an independent artist, and I, I take a lot of pride in that. Um, but I think – at the time that it came out, you know, a lot of the stuff that was on those playlists was, you know, major label artists. Um, and since then, there have been a lot of independent artists that have had huge success because of um, their songs being on on Spotify, Apple, all that. But um, before, as you guys know, you had to have a song go to radio to really get respect in Nashville. Um, and so luckily, I was, you know, one of on the forefront, one of the few that was able to kind of break through and um, have shows and be invited to cool things because of my success on Spotify and Apple and all that. But um, yeah, man, I wrote this song. It was originally just kind of, I'm going to show you guys the, the voice memo really quick because it's hilarious. Let's see. Okay. September 21st, 2016. You can see this, right? Wow. Okay. So this is what I have. Here we go. July 17th, 2016. That's all I had. Like literally that, that is what I brought into the right the next day. 
And uh, I just had some cores and I said, I'm a little this, I'm a little that, I'm a little this, and I'm a lot in love is what I brought in. And we came up with uh, the rest of it, obviously, but um, it was really my way I had never really written a song about my my wife who was my girlfriend at the time um and I had never really showed her in a song that I loved her um and what's cool about that song is you know I've had people reach out and say you know I proposed to my wife with that song or I told a girl I love her for the first time because that song um and for me it was just it was my way of showing Lexi that I love her and I want to write songs about her it was the first song I ever wrote about her um and so it's kind of cool to, you know, that there's all these different stories and different ways that music translates, but um, that's kind of how that song became. And it's, it's just wild how much has changed my career and helped me throughout, you know, the years. It's crazy because, you know, and, and like I said, I still don't have a label. So, you know, people are still trying to figure out if I'm legit or not. But um, I, I think that one thing that Whole Lot in Love did is it, it really, I wasn't ready for the type of success that I had because of that song by, by any means. Like I did not know what was gonna happen. Um, but I just try to continually prove myself that I continually put out music that I care about and hope that people like it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm definitely trying to, to reach the success that that song had and gave me very early on in my career. And um, I know I'll get there. It's a, it's a long journey ahead, but um, I feel like things definitely feel like they're they're moving in the right direction for the first time in a while. Hey, what's up? It's KJ from The Hook. We are stoked to announce that we just launched our 2021 line from Hill Rose Company Clothing. All of our designs are fresh and original with a little bit of a rock and roll edge. There is a great selection of hoodies, tees, and hats. Check them out at hillroseco.com. That's right, KJ. And don't forget, you can get your exclusive Hook Podcast t-shirts there as well. Now back to episode nine of the Hook Podcast with Austin Burke. When you put out Whole Lot of Love, um, what was Lexi's response to that when you showed it to her the first time? Well, she uh, she was really just excited that obviously there was a song coming out about her. Um, but I'll be honest with you guys. I mean, it was a time in country music where Thomas Rhett was not Thomas Rhett. Um, the relationship side of country was not shown and wives were not on the forefront. I know it's, it was only three or four years ago, but that still was not really a, a thing. Like showing your significant other was not a thing. And so I was kind of told by the people that, you know, were giving me advice that she should not be on the forefront. She should not be um, somebody that is, you put the spotlight on. And so, you know, you don't want people to know you have a girlfriend, that type of thing. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a bummer, but it's true. And that's how it was, you know? And so for, for the first couple months, I, I was like, ah, you know, like I, it's about this girl or whatever, but then it just, it came to the point where I was like, no, man, this is, this is a girl I love. This is, this is who it is. And I, you know, I remember like posting about her for the first time and it just felt like a weight off my shoulders. Like, all right, I'm going to be honest. And, but it took people like Thomas Rhett and, you know, Lauren and their relationship to feel comfortable with that, you know, cause people started to like, look up to them and respect them so um i you know i still try to live my life like him and obviously with him being my boss now uh with my publishing deal that's i, I really really look up to their relationship and he's without him knowing he's really opened a lot of doors for me and lexi just being open with our relationship and stuff like that it's funny because that you say that because um one of the things that i like the most about you is um and we'll get a little bit more into this later but on tiktok i follow you on tiktok because we we've followed you on tiktok for a while now that we've been on there but um i love when you show people your music and and i especially love when you show her a song that you wrote write about her and yeah. you know like that interaction and that first reaction and i love how you guys are together um because i'm married braley's about to be married and you know, it's cool. It's cool to see that, that you, you've, you've embraced that and not tried to hide or run from it because, you know, you're, you're a younger looking dude. And I'm sure that that could be a way that you could go about it. But in today's society and culture, I think that what you are showing is way more powerful and impactful than um, the opposite of doing, you know, trying to hide it. So really cool, man, just uh, as a, a compliment to you. 
thank you so much yeah it's it's uh it's definitely you know fun how our lives have correlated and how Lexi and I can just kind of we're growing together through all the craziness going on you know so um, so cool dude and cool to that that song like you know hold on love kind of sparked this incredible relationship of not only her but you know a lot of songs about her and then you know a lot of songs that people can connect with with their relationship so um yeah I mean I'll, pff, all my love songs are about her and uh, <laughs> <laughs> all, my, so. all, my break, all my breakup songs are too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, um, another thing I want to tap into you, you, you've said this a few times and um, I've become really uh, like an advocate for this in music. And, and, and I like to motivate people who are thinking about doing it. It's being an independent artist like the, you know, the old way, like you said, was you had to be on a label, you had to get on radio, you had to do this, you had to do that. But in today's culture and society with social media and the things you've been able to do and accomplish on your own, like, I want to, I want you to tap into why it is so important for you to continue to this independent artist and why you take so much pride in it um, from yeah. your perspective. Well, I think it's important for people to know that the most successful artists that we look up to Luke Combs, Sam Hunt, um, they really Luke Combs, uh, was a hardcore independent artist for a long time. And somebody, somebody like Luke is somebody that I really look up to with my career because he he really made himself who he is from the ground up. Um, he played in smoky bars, you know, all throughout the country and, you know, built his music from the literally ground zero. Um, and so for me, you know, I was lucky to have success streaming before streaming was cool. Uh, I mean, I remember going to radio stations and they're like, all right, well, like, what does that mean? Like, cool. You have 50 million streams. Like, what is that? Like, nobody understood the magnitude of like what that meant, but I think people now understand. And, um, you know, it's for me, I, it, it, it's a really, sticky subject for me because I do want a record deal someday and I really like I I know that I need the power of a record label behind me to get to the next level but I also still want to be an advocate for independent artists because you can do a lot on your own like you can take your music from ground level to very big success um with very little money you know and I never had any investors in me I never had like all this money dumped into me has all been very organic and natural. And I just, I think that gives people hope. Like, you know, you don't need to, you don't need all this stuff that people like even Taylor Swift had a million dollars from her dad. Like, yeah. you know, that's, I, I respect the hell out of her, but like, I want to be the guy that didn't have that. You know, I want to be the guy that people can be like, Oh, he did it without that. You know, like a Cody um, Johnson. Exactly. And yeah, no disrespect to her, like what she's done is yeah. incredible, but I think it is important that people understand, you know, there's, it, it's possible to do it with nothing. Yeah. And you had so many streams on whole lot in love. And because of that, you made your Opry debut. Let's yeah. go into that. What was that call? Like when they're like, Hey man, you're gonna make your Opry debut on this specific day. Let's go into that whole situation. Man. So, so Vince Gill, uh, like I said, I met him at the Palm and, and I know him through some mutual friends in Arizona, but um, he, uh, he did a voice, like he did a video for me and sent it to my manager and invited me to play the Opry. And um, for me, playing the Opry is, is probably my greatest accomplishment, probably always will be because, um, you know, when I first moved to Nashville, that's one of the first places I went. Every country artist wants to play there. Um, but for me, it was much more than that. My great grandpa, who's 94, he's a World War II veteran. Um, he, he flew out to the show uh, from Arizona and he probably will never fly again, to be honest. Uh, this is his last flight. Uh, and he, uh, he was out in Nashville and had, he has really bad COPD and uh, he had like a, you know, attack that night and had to go to the hospital the night before the Opry. And uh, so, he, you know, I, I find all this out. They're trying to keep it on the DL for me because, you know, they don't want me to stress out about him, you know, before my Opry debut. But um, he ended up pulling through and, and came to the Opry. And um, I was actually able to allow him to step in the circle before I did. And, so man, cool. it was just 
everything about that night was just perfect. And, um, you know, I, I guess you'll never, you'll never really, um, get that moment back your first time at the Opry. Um, but it couldn't have been a, a better experience. They treat you so well and make you feel so special. And, um, I just said, you know, I said, when I stepped in that circle, like, it doesn't matter what I do for the rest of my life. This, I, I'll be able to say that I made it in country music because of my, my chance to play the Opry. So I had that quote written down. I was literally just about to ask you about that. Um, the, the quote that's in a video of you making your Opry debut. And I just thought that that was, you could tell the sincerity in your voice in that moment of, okay, it doesn't matter if I make another dollar or if I go broke, this, this is the moment. And to have your grandfather there, I'm very, very close to my grandparents. And so um, to have your grandpa there, I, I feel like that's awesome. I, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you say, Hey, you said you, uh, you got engaged on your grandparents anniversary, right? Yeah. My grandparents 55th wedding anniversary. Man, you are so. close with them. And I know yeah. that I, was, I know that was on purpose. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was uh, a very, it, it was cool to do. Uh, my, do, actual, do my plan was actually to do it at the Opry. Um, oh, that great. was because my fiance is a huge country music fan and she's a songwriter. And so um, that was my original plan, but because of 2020 and quarantine and everything, um, I, we actually decorated our whole apartment, com like a, a room in our apartment complex and did it there. But that was oh, my original plan was to do it at the Opry. So. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's congrats, man. Honestly, being engaged is so fun because it's, it's exciting, you know, and it's scary. It's all these emotions. So if you need any advice, man, hit me up. I'm here for, for sure. It. <laughs> for That's sure. awesome. I just did it. <laughs> That's it. I literally, KJ and I were on the phone earlier. Just, I mean, I'm always yeah. bouncing things off of him and his wife. And so, yeah, I appreciate it. Who's, appreciate who's more, who's more involved in the wedding process? You, your wife or her mom? Um, her for <laughs> sure for sure it's her and then me and then her mom her mom's just all like right, right, just right. do your do do it just just do it and hopefully we don't have to spend that much money <laughs> oh man i know She's, her lexi, mom's probably listening to this too so hi terry <laughs> hey terry what's up yeah my lexi's mom angie she was uh man she did so much it was honestly really nice because lexi and i both are like we just all we cared about was good good liquor good food and good music and yeah. uh she took care of everything else, man. It, our wedding was perfect. So I'm sure yours is going to be great. When, when's the big day, man? Uh, hopefully September 4th is the plan. Awesome. So. Awesome. My birthday's yeah. the 6th. So it's going to be. There you awesome. go. Hell yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. Braley asked me to be in the wedding. So I was pretty honored about that, you know? Very cool. It's always cool to be able to stand up with your friend. And I've known him yeah. for a long time. You're going to be the ring bearer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. We'll use one of his boys. He's got the three of them. Girl. I got plenty of kids we can throw in to yeah, do yeah. that stuff I mean, just to toss them in there they'll be good are you doing a bachelor party or yes yes we're trying we to are. figure that out yep we got any ideas what do you think what should we do uh man I went to Vegas and uh I actually Brett Young did his in Vegas too because I, I ran into him there um Vegas is cool but I, I think how many how many groomsmen do you have there's six of us total. So five okay. groomsmen and me. So, all right. So Vegas would be good then for that type of group. I had like 12 people plus my dad. Um, and it was, man, it was just too many people. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, if I could do it different, I'd go to like, I'd go to like uh, Charleston, South Carolina or something. That literally, yeah. what was the one the other day? We were just talking about going to Myrtle beach and playing Myrtle golf. Beach, yeah. So yeah. yeah. A little golfing trip, get the, you know, Something get the boys fun, out. Man. I uh, think my fiance is going to Nashville. That's, okay. I think that's where they're going to go. So. That's the hip spot now. Do the usual bachelorette bachelor party. Man, it's, they, <laughs> I, I have no words, man. This, uh, so a little secret about myself, uh, Lexi and I, we bought our first house uh, a couple years ago. And uh, last year, during like before the pandemic, all the stuff, we used all of our wedding money to basically paint our house pink and turn it into a bachelorette house. That and was a whole conversation in my part in my house today at lunch while we were looking through your TikTok. Dude, so. it, is, <laughs> it is the craziest thing I've ever done, but uh, it's it's hilarious, man. Like it's sold out for 2021. Wow, like, it's it's That's crazy. Smart. How bachelorettes come here, man. I, I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's really smart, man. Yeah, my fiance was watching that video on your TikTok at lunch today. So <laughs> it's 
trust me as a dude you don't want to stay there but uh it, girls love it <laughs> yeah. it's got like cds on the wall and the steps yeah, are got, all different colors and that's man, awesome it was all lexi's idea i just i went with it It was painting the walls pink Smart you know man. it's crazy man so we did all that and then we actually moved out of that house the day of the tornado so the tornado happened Ooh. that night oh and wow we moved and the tornado ripped like a hundred yards away from our house. So we, like oh. our neighbor said, they thought they were going to die. Like it was crazy. Um, wow. And we That's were out scary. of power. For, we were out of power for two weeks at that house. So um, our first two guests that we were going to have had to cancel and give them their money back. And then three weeks out, we had one guest. And then a month after that coronavirus and kind of the rest is history. So there you go. You're smart. Crazy. Follow whatever your wife says. They usually are right. So that's they advice know. for Braley too. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned <laughs> yeah, that after man. almost six years. So yeah, just to dig back into the music side. Um, tell us a, a little bit more about your publishing deal and how that came to and working with Thomas Rhett and what that's like for you. Yeah, man. So again, another crazy story. Uh, my, I got invited uh, to the BMI awards actually because of Will Rambo, the guy that helped to get me out to Nashville. He's, he hit me up last minute and he said, Hey man, I got an extra ticket to the BMI awards. You want to come day of, I told Lacey, I was like, I don't really want to go. Uh, you know, I've been there and it's same old, you know, ass kissing thing. And, uh, <laughs> ended up, ended up, uh, ended up going. And, um, when I was there, <clears throat> I had talked uh, to Thomas Rhett two weeks prior um, and we had met on his bus actually through Ashley Gorley. Um, <clears throat> and I met him. And so I was gonna, I was looking at signing a deal with Ashley Gorley and his company tape room. And yeah, uh, that's where Hunter is. Yeah. Yeah. And so I sit, I saw, um, TR at the BMI awards and just congratulated him. He won a bunch of awards and he said, Hey man, like how are things with Ashley going? And I said, yeah, man, they're, they're all right. You know, I'm not really sure how, how things stand. He goes, well, if you want a publishing deal, you should come sign with me uh, I'll make it happen. I'm like, what, you know, what are you talking about? I didn't even know he had a publishing company. And, uh, sure enough, you know, the next day were the CMA awards and, uh, I didn't want to text him then I hit him up the next day and he said, Hey man, first of the year, we'll make it happen. No questions asked. So I went in, you know, met with the team, met with Rhett, uh, his dad and Virginia, his manager. And, um, you know, it took quite a while to make it happen, but we ended up signing the deal and, uh, I just re-upped this year. So this is my second year with home team. But nice. uh, like I told you guys earlier, you know, I just look up to him so much and who he is as a, as a man, even to be able to call him and be like, Hey man, I have questions about like how to handle the situation. Um, you know, not everybody's used to the stuff that comes with this profession we choose, but um, to have a role model like him to call and be like, Hey man, how, help me avoid this. Help me fix this. Help me do you know, whatever it is, I can call him and he's there for me. It's just, it's really special, a really special relationship to have for sure. Yeah. And I was just going to ask you, how is that relationship? Is there any, you know, songwriting happening between you guys, or is it more of like a mentor, mentee, boss, employee relationship with you guys? Um, it's definitely, it's definitely a uh, friendship, but I mean, he, you know, He's a busy guy. He just uh, he just did his uh, tequila company that just came out. So yeah, I'm um, trying to get my hands on some of that. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. For sure, <laughs> me too. Um, but he's man, he's so busy. To be honest, the, the relationship that's really been incredible and and special for me is the relationship with Rhett. Um, and I was not expecting that. You know, I kind of didn't know what to expect about with that. And he's so far into his career that he's. I was Legend. like, he probably doesn't yeah. really care about somebody like me. But um, man, he is. I'll send songs in and he'll, he'll be like, Hey man, like fix this, fix that. This one sounds great. Love this. Don't like this. Like he has been incredible. And you know, he is, uh, he's just such an incredible songwriter, such a, you know, legend, like you said. So um, he's been, he's been incredible. That has been a true mentorship uh, with Rhett um, and TR, man, he's, he's more of just like, a friend and, and definitely a mentor, but in a different aspect, you know, it's, it's, he's not as accessible as, as red is, but um, sure. you know, they're both, they're just incredible people. And then you sign your pub deal in 2019 and 2020 comes around before yeah. the pandemic. What was the plan for you or what was your plan moving forward for 2020? Well, um, 
honestly, Thomas really writes a lot on the road. So I was kind of hoping he doesn't really write a lot in Nashville. So I was kind of hoping to like go on the road with him and write um, and experience that, you know, lifestyle um, a little bit. And uh, so, you know, unfortunately that didn't happen, but I think when you talk to songwriters and I'm sure you guys already have had this conversation, but it's like, we just last year, like we made the most of it. And I think, um, everybody I wrote with, I could not be more grateful for the experience I had with them because it wasn't easy. You know, zoom rights, you lose that, that energy in the room, you lose that, um, that synergy, whatever it might be to make that magic in the room that day. And, and when it's not there, it's hard to, to find it in, you know, inspiration, uh, just in your apartment or where, wherever you might be. So, um, I, I, we all made the most of last year and I think some incredible songs came out of that. Um, but I, I'm so excited to get back in the room. I've done it a couple times, but I'm excited to just be with people again. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, what's exciting for me. We're like, yeah, waiting weird. For Every, oh, sorry, oh, go, Kendra, ahead. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> We're just waiting for touring season to come back around so that we can do all this in person. I know. I know. I'm sure you guys are probably missing like even just being in the same room together for the podcast and like having people, you know, into wherever it might be to do it. You know, it's like, there's something magical about that. And there's something cool about that. And even when you guys are together, I'm sure you're able to bounce off stuff that you just can't do over zoom. So um, that's how it is for us too. Yeah. I, I can't imagine writing. Cause you're right. I mean, Braley and I've been lucky, but we've known each other for a long time. So our dynamic and our relationship is, is what's able to make this. But yeah, I mean, we've, we've even talked about like, Hey, once touring comes back around, what does that look like? You know, can we, can we start to do these like pre-show or post-show podcasts with artists that we know or writers that are on the road, like you said, touring. Um, so we, we have a lot of plans, but yeah, it's gotta be hard, but man, I, I couldn't agree more with something that you said. You said we took the the most advantage of what we had this year, made the best of it. And honestly, like you brought the heat this year. I I on like man, I go through the songs that you put out this year and just looking at it from you know um desert child to, you know towards the beginning and then um I'm a big fan of young love I think it's really cool and catchy like it's a super cool song but man that I would say my two favorites uh that you put out this year is ain't gonna break my heart is by far my favorite like I mean it is fire that it, if if I always tell people it, you know try and tell people about music and this is a song that I legitimately would show anybody I don't care what genre of music you listen to it's fire so, Thank you um, so tell us about the the songs you were putting out this year and and you know what the strategy was and and how you went about that yeah so um my manager uh was actually Jason Aldean's tour manager so I knew I knew pretty early on um <clears throat> that things were not good uh, as far as touring, um, Jason was touring and halfway through, you know, all this came about and they were very early on, you know, confronted with coronavirus. And so, um, I was, I was very early on asked the question, Austin, do you want to put out music this year or do you not? And I had been working really hard the, the year before that, uh, writing all these songs and, a lot of people said, don't put out music. You know, it's not a good time. You're not going to be able to get the right press. You're not going to be able to get the right um, stuff you need. Um, but what I told you guys earlier, I'm an independent artist. It's different for me, right? I don't rely on radio. I don't rely on touring. I really rely on streaming. And so I said, I'm going to go all in on this. I'm going to go all in on this um, streaming. I'm going to put out as much music as I, ha as I have ever and um, I'm just going to, I'm going to go for it. And what I found is that people really, really needed music, you know, and yeah. people, people needed those songs. There was nothing else. Like people ran out of Netflix shows to watch. You can only watch Tiger King so many times, right? Seriously. So <laughs> um, it was, uh, oh, here's my dog Ryman, by the way, you want to say what's up. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it was a time, it was a time that I, just went all in on my music and I really appreciate you saying that that you like it and that you, you noticed that because um it was not an easy decision to make especially when I knew that there was not going to be touring involved with putting out music um and you know it's just 
it, I've been so blessed to have the platform with Apple Music and Spotify and Pandora and you know Amazon and all these things to put out music and have people listen. And now with TikTok, it's it's kind of doubled that, you know. And um, I, I this year I'm putting out uh, a lot more music. I'm putting out either an EP or an album. I'm not sure. We're kind of deciding between the two, but um, we're we're going all in. And like I said, I, I'm trying to get a trying to get a record deal for sure this year. So uh, we'll see what happens. But thank you so much for that. That that means a lot, man. There's a video on your TikTok, and you're doing like a voiceover, and you're talking about how. You know, normally the way that music works, you have to, uh, you know, rely on radio and rely on your your push from your record label. And then you go out and you play shows and you see people, you know, uh, singing along to those songs. And then you go, OK, that might be the song that I think is the big one. You're changing the game for sure. When did you for what song did it take until you were like, OK, I think I might have something here on TikTok. <laughs> So honestly, man, uh, the whole TikTok thing was tough for me because I find a lot of those videos super cheesy. And you know, <laughs> I just like, as an artist, like, I don't want to be cheesy. Like, I don't want people to be like, oh, that's the dude from TikTok. Like, I think that I want to be more than that, you know? And so it's been tough. It's been really tough to try to figure out like where my lane is, but I'll never forget my wife. Uh, I had written a song and she put it on her TikTok and it, it went crazy. Like people were like, Oh my God, I love this song. And I was like, damn, people really are liking new music on here. So that's when I started to like, I'd write a song during the day. I'd bring it home. I'd show my wife. And what it's turned into is sort of an A and R it's like my fans are now my A and R team. Like usually at a record label, you have five or six people that are your quote unquote A and R and they pick all your music and, you know, decide the fate of your future. But luckily I have, you know, now thousands of people that say, Hey, I like this song. Hey, I don't like this song. And it's really, it's exciting. And I see a lot of artists now doing that um, and putting out stuff. Um, I definitely was not the first to do it, but I just, I'm so excited for the future of music because it's truly what the fans want. It's not manufactured. It's not what some guy to label wants. It's not what some, chick uh you know that has all the power wants it's what the fans want to hear and that's i think that's exciting for everybody you know yeah i couldn't agree with that more and it's kind of interesting um you know i talked about it a little bit earlier about how you approach it but i've you know at first i was kind of hesitant on tiktok and i've i i think some of it is because i would hear the noise and then I still hear every once in a while artists that are like kind of snub their nose at TikTok, like, oh, I don't do TikTok for whatever reason that is, which I think, well, you're missing the boat because <laughs> there are millions and millions of people on TikTok, every age, every demographic, every single person. And, and I think everybody does it a little bit different. Um, but I especially like the way that you go about it and how you do it. I love that you show like, um, one of the first videos that I noticed was you were trying to see what people thought of guess about town home and, and you were, you showed your buddies. And I remember watching the video, you're in your car with your buddies and you were playing it. And, and I think I saw one with your dad and it was like the same thing. And you were just like showing your pride for your home. And, and it was just really, really cool to me that you did that and how you went about it. And I love how you, the, the way that you do it because you truly are doing it to see what people think like your friends and people that are in your, you know, fan base. And, um, you know, why, why do you go about it that way? What meant, what, how did you decide to do that? Well, I think my, it goes back to like not being cheesy. Like I just want to be authentic with it. And I think the more authentic you are, the less cheesy it is. Right. And so, for sure. um, for me, like, and I, I'm still, guys, I'm still trying to figure that out. Like, I'm still yeah. trying to figure out, like, what's You're doing good, man. <laughs> I, just, I just filmed a video before I went on with you guys, and I'm, like, thinking, damn, that's kind of cheesy. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, you know, it's, 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 uh, I think after even just talking with you and hearing what you guys have to say about it, I think it's just the authenticity, you know, like, yeah. um, being real and Lexi's, Lexi's reactions are, authentic and what she's like you know it's her first time hearing this and people can feel that and um you know it's it's definitely something that's new and I'm I don't want to get repetitive with it you know I don't want to be like 
oh, here's another song that Lexi's never heard. So I'm trying to think of like how to, you know, branch out from that a little bit. And obviously like my videos with her do way better than the ones just by myself. So it's like, <laughs> That's all right, how do I get people to like, you know, like the videos with just me too? Cause she's not, you know, always home all the time. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, I, I, man, it's so new. I feel like it's just the wild west and I have Definitely. no idea what algorithm works or all that stuff. So it's, I just try to put out content and see what people think. <laughs> What I love about the stuff that you're doing on TikTok, and I refuse to get on TikTok only because I have such an addictive personality that I will sit there all damn day and scroll. Oh, yeah. But I do, I do follow, or I go and look at your guys' TikToks and stuff like that. And so one thing that I do really like is that you go from the very, you know, heartfelt and serious of something like speed of life and where you're like, Hey, I sent this to my wife. I didn't know she was going to post it. Now it's huge. Now I guess I better put this out because all of you are talking about it and I love it to the one where y'all are sitting on the couch and you say, there's a hint here. And it's the end of the chorus is I want to get drunk and make out. And she just like, looks at you like whatever. <laughs> That's what I love about the content that you're putting out. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. It's the cool thing is it, it yeah, I started this hashtag, the song I wrote today. And so it's like, you know, as a songwriter, I try to approach it as like, I try to approach it from the songwriter side of things more than the artist side where it's like, hey, I wrote this song today. If you want me to put out this song as an artist, I'll do it. But like, just check out the song I wrote today. And, uh, you know, it's, it's it's been cool to do it like that. And um, obviously, you know, I don't write songs every single day. So it's not going to be like an everyday thing. But um, it's been fun, man. And a lot of them, honestly, are songs that I wrote, you know, the week prior, whatever it might be. Um, and I had, you know, I'll just get the demo back. And so that's that's like that moment where i'm like hey lexi i just got the demo like let's go listen to it you know so that's that's what's fun that's what's fun about it. it we have a playlist um that we update every week and i go very uh radio programmer in it and i will specifically <laughs> put like the podcast at the top and now that i'm going to say this people are going to realize what i do but i put <laughs> our upcoming guests higher in the playlist so if you listen to it yeah. not on shuffle it's like uh, i go radio programmer on it and one of the yeah. songs that as soon as we made the playlist was speed of life made it right. I mean, yeah. before we even had talked to you about coming on, it made it in the playlist and wow. then ain't going to break your heart or ain't going to break my heart came right in the playlist and is yep. up high on the playlist. And so I just want to say, keep putting out great music because yeah. there's nothing that you've put out this year that I've been like, okay, that's, that's good. You know, everything you've put out, I'm like, I love Fire. that song. Like Thank you I, so much especially well, speed of life. Like I played it for my fiance when you put the original version out and she kind of listened to it. And I was like, no, you're like you, you should listen to this song. <laughs> and now I'm pretty sure it's a contender for first dance song. Oh, so. damn, oh. dude. That's crazy. I love that. Well, she probably liked the first kiss under the neon turns to a knee on the ground line. Right. Yeah. She like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, one thing that's been really cool about 2020 is um, I've been able to find out who I am as an artist. And, you know, when I first moved to Nashville, I really struggled. Like I wanted to be, I wanted to be Luke Bryan. Uh, I just gone to see Luke Bryan concerts and I wanted to be him. And then Sam Hunt came out and I wanted to be Sam Hunt. And then Thomas Rhett came out. And I wanted to be Thomas Rhett. And, you know, 2020 was the first time in my life as an artist that I said, I'm okay with being from the West coast. I'm okay with being from Arizona. I'm okay that I'm not this Southern boy. I'm okay that I didn't grow up in a tractor and trailer driving a truck on a dirt road. I'm okay with that, right? And it's, and it's been a really refreshing thing to say because for so long, country music was the Southern boy from Georgia or you know the Southern boy from Alabama or Arkansas like it, it wasn't cool to be from the west coast like you're not country don't sing country music right and um I think that you guys know you're you live in Colorado that's technically the west coast like there's some country country people out there man. Like, I mean like I told you guys I grew up singing in a rodeo like it's, yeah. it's very country in Arizona and I, I'm just I'm just now taking pride in that I'm just now taking pride in being from the west coast and just owning it because uh it's it's cool and country music is cool well, i'm glad you did man because um i'm a colorado native i'm actually fourth generation colorado native my 
great um, grandmother came to Colorado in a covered wagon from Oklahoma. So you representing the Western, the wild West, man, makes me like, I was proud when I heard you sing it. I was like, yeah, finally, somebody who's about to stand up and say, Hey, you know, Hey, we got, I mean, shoot, man, we got uh shine frontier days, which is maybe like 25, 30 minutes from my house. We have um, the national Western stock show is one of the biggest oh, rodeo um, events in the world. So man, you know, like people who think that you got to be from the South or you got to be from you know, this place or that place. I was, I, I love that you stood up and said, Hey man, the wild West is cool. And I'm, that's where I'm from. And I'm proud of that. And I'm going to be country just like anybody else. And I thought that was cool, man. So thank well, you for doing that. I appreciate that, man. And I, you know, a lot of people are from the West coast, John party, Brett young, Dirks is from Arizona. Um, yep. you know, Dirks you comes out here Devin all the Dawson. time. <laughs> yeah. Dirks lives out here. Yeah. yeah. So you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people from, that area and um but everybody's afraid to say that you know what i mean like everybody's afraid like i'll be honest with you guys i love dirks he's like my favorite like i, I love him to death but he only claims that he's from arizona when he's in arizona <laughs> like, <laughs> like people don't even know he's from arizona you know what i mean and i just want to be like i'm proud of that you know i'm proud yeah. of where i'm from and um i love i love it uh you know desert child i talked about she's a colorado beauty queen sitting on my california king like that you know, Lexi, Colorado, like that's true. That's true. Love it. You know, um, but what I found is like owning where I'm from has allowed everybody else that's not from the South to own where they're from too. Like I got fans in Australia and England and Canada that are like, I connect with this music because I'm not from the South, but I still am country. Right. Like, and that's cool to me. That's cool to, to hear that these stories of people just, proud to listen to country music and connect with it in any way at all yeah for sure um one thing i did want to ask you before we let you go is you know you and your wife your wife has a very very large tiktok following and yeah. if people are listening and they don't know what y'all do she does a thing called the venmo challenge where people venmo her and then you guys go out and you leave big tips now what has been i've watched a whole bunch of them if you don't cry there's something wrong with you <laughs> what has been your favorite of all of those because that's Man. something outside of music that y'all are doing to change people's lives well it's it's been a really cool thing um and it started very small we didn't expect to for it to grow to what it is today um we were both in the restaurant industry as you know i talked about earlier and so we have a lot of friends in the restaurant industry and so that community is huge in nashville you know nashville is built on uh country music and tourism and uh you know a lot of aspiring country artists work in restaurants and so um that's where we started and it's kind of blossomed into something much bigger but um i, I if, if you had to narrow it down um i was just telling somebody actually the other day my probably my my favorite one was one we did recently with an Uber driver and I can't remember his name, but it was, it was just a couple weeks ago. My dad was in town and uh, there was this moment and I film all the videos. So uh, I get to see from like behind the lens view. Right. And there was this moment where he realized it, it, it happens all the time. People get, they say, we're, we say, we're going to give you a thousand dollar tip and they're in shock and then it hits them. Right. So for this guy it hit him and he said, no, I don't deserve this. And then Lexi said, yes, you do deserve this. And he took her hand and it was this moment I was filming and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the most incredible shot, right? Because it was like, didn't matter about coronavirus and touching hands. It didn't matter about race. It didn't matter about anything that was going on. And that moment, two humans were holding hands and enjoying this beautiful moment. And it just hit me. It was like, that's why we do this. That is why it sums everything up. Um, it was such a beautiful moment. And, you know, there's been so many of those where people are just, they're so relieved. Um, you know, everyone's working so hard, especially now. And it, we're not changing lives. It's, it's, it, we're, we're able to make somebody, what we try to say, you know, just make their day a little bit better because life is tough right now for a lot of people. And, um, you know, this is not our money. We're not tipping people, you know, from our pockets. This is thousands of people that have come together and form a, incredible community um that want to give back and i just feel super blessed and i know lexi does just to be able to you know give people a, a better day you know i love it
I love it, man. Well, we could, we could talk music for hours and hours, but we definitely should uh, let you jump off here. And we just appreciate you coming on and telling some awesome stories and being, you know, just such a real person. Like yeah. we really try to bring on the real of the real humans on the podcast. And like we talked about before, we try to bring on those people that, you know, there be, there could be people in here that may not have heard your name or have heard your song, but had never put two and two together or people who are big fans of you. And we just want to pull back the curtain on, you know, non major label people who are out here doing awesome things and putting out really, really good music. Well, thank you guys, man. I, I can't thank you enough for all the kind words. And um, I hope once all this stuff clears up, we can grab a beer, hang out, hit the golf course, whatever. Yes. Um, but man, you guys are so incredible, such great dudes. And Thanks, I, I'm man. super excited to, you, you gained a new listener in me. So uh, <laughs> I, I know uh, I'm excited to, to hear future podcasts and thank you for being so welcoming. And just like I said, you know, re- you guys are real too, man. You made me feel comfortable and that's, that's what half this is about is, you know? So thank you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we're trying to do. I've done so many of those cookie cutter, you know, um, radio interviews where they tell you what to ask, or, you know, you're just, you've been through a million of those and that's well, something that we're trying they, not to do. They tell you what to say on our end. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Media training. <laughs> and we're not looking, we're not looking to try and like, you know, get people to give up, you know, um, like, you know, we've had people on that we could have asked them questions about stuff that, you know, we're not, we're not TMZ. We're not trying to be that we, we just want reality, like real yeah. reality of who these people are and where you come from and, you know, how you got to where you are, because there are, I mean, gosh, you could probably find hundreds of people in Nashville that are trying to do what you're doing and they look up to you and idolize you. And, and we want to show people that, it's hard work and dedication and, and commit commitment and sacrifice. So really cool, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. that. I, I'm going to leave it on this, man. I, I know a lot of people um, are struggling right now. And, you know, last year I, I was definitely struggling myself. Um, and it's, it's very easy to look side to side and compare yourself to other people, but I just encourage everybody listening to um, own who they are, be proud of who you are because everybody's special. Everybody's unique. Everybody's beautiful. And um, you know, it's uh be proud of who you are. Don't, don't look side to side. Cause that doesn't matter. So appreciate right you guys on. and hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, thank you for everybody that's listening. Yes. Thank you. Austin Burke on the hook podcast. Thanks again, man. And when uh, more stuff comes out, we'll have you on again. We're looking forward to it. I'd love to do it.